Um, my next guest paved the way in stand-up com comedy for a whole generation of comedians. The original iconoclast, a great political satirist, has his own show on the Monitor Channel. Please welcome the wise one, Mort Saul. Yeah. There's something comforting about that sweater, you know? That's my uniform. Yeah. That's what, uh, well, this is interesting hearing you talk about Hollywood, Dennis. Yeah. You know, it's my hometown, even though I feel like I got a green card. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> but, but, uh, you know, when I started in the business, I thought meeting actresses was really, uh, like the bonus. Yeah. You know what, uh, I used to say only date actresses and other female impersonators, <laughs> you know, but the, all the girls I'd meet out here, you go, you go to dinner with them and they'd say, an Italian restaurant in Beverly Hills, and they'd, I'd say, what's your life about? And they'd say, I want to be an actress. And I'd say, why? And they'd say, I have something to say. And then I'd say, what do you have to say? And they'd say, I want to be an actress. And then we wouldn't have time to go around again, so we'd leave, you know. <laughs> That's how I started, with women, that is. Well, it sounds like a really healthy thing you have with gals there. Uh, <laughs> what, uh, you know what, I, I like, loved your autobiography or Heartland. I don't know, what, what do you call Heartland? Your manifesto or? It was a, a, an autobiography written in the middle before you knew how it would pan out. Mm -hmm. It was written in the middle of life. And the publisher said, I want to get a guy who's sure he's right. And then we'll see if he's right. So, so uh, the book was, uh, it was like a confessional. Yeah, I, I love the old stories about uh, when you were starting. You know, this man was on the cover of Time Magazine. Now for a comedian, which to some extent is like the bastard child of this industry, or we were in the past. To, to think about a comedian on the cover of Time, that blows my mind. You had the ears of kings, you know, you were <laughs> ran with, well, I find it fascinating you were part of that Kennedy conclave. The and... great thing is, is who you get to meet, I would say. Yeah. Uh, you know, when you were talking uh, to Sean about Hollywood, reminded me, uh, I was at the White House in the first term, the first Reagan term, to do a show. Mm -hmm. And uh, for the Prime Minister of Israel at that time, uh, who was fond of saying that uh, that uh, the American Secretary of State, that was Begin then, Begin would say that, uh, although mu they're much alike in their, uh, Shamir and Begin, he's a protege of his, he said that uh, uh, Kissinger was fond of throwing him, a, uh, if he was drowning 20 feet from shore, he'd throw him a 15-foot rope and then say he'd met him more than halfway. It was that kind of evening, you know? So, be Begin anyway, is so Begin. They were talking about Hollywood, and Bush was talking about Hollywood being wild. And Pre President Reagan said, it's just an 8 o'clock, go to bed with the chickens town. And George Bush said, quote, some chickens. <laughs> so you see, that's what you get to hear. <laughs> what, no, what were you doing at a Reagan function, for God's well, sake? Well, he invited you're me. The, yeah, but you gotta, you, you're the last holdout there, man. You're the liberal... Pin up, girl. You can't. Well, go it's back funny there. about them. You know, you can get you can get very tired holding the door open for the liberals. Uh, you know, I keep getting calls now about the virtue of Oliver Stone's movie. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm glad everybody took an interest in President Kennedy. 28 years later, they may have noticed he hasn't been around the office recently. <laughs> Boy, I'm telling you. You know, but but you know, going back, and this is something you can really identify with, Dennis. The time that I was reading the Warren report on the stage or holding up a picture of Ruby shooting Oswald and saying, uh, this is a picture of Oswald being shot while he's being guarded by 123 members of the Dallas police force, or 124 if we count Ruby. <laughs> so, there was nobody around there. That's, well, you know, that stuff's volatile. You gotta watch that stuff. Yeah, you, pay your yeah. you pay your price when you make points like by the that. Time, by the time the crowd comes around to it, it's time to move on. Don't you find that? Well, you feel it took 28 years, or do you just feel it was such a sad event in our in our lives that it took a half-life of that long before we could well, confront it. a lot of it, it came back to me. Uh, last night I was looking at Ted Koppel. What were you doing that for? I have a satellite dish. I see you at 1030 out of Denver. Yeah. So <laughs> I went over to Koppel at 1130 and uh, the uh, head, uh, they were talking about the Warren report and uh, they quoted Earl Warren who once said, with a remark aimed at me at that time, he said, if they have any new evidence, let them come forward. And at that time, we felt that we were kind of fond of the old evidence because it had kept the virginal quality since they didn't look <laughs> at it the first time. So you know, it's like that. You know. Now, <laughs> when you say he aimed that statement, are you sure it wasn't a second Supreme Court judgment behind it? <laughs> behind it. Well, now, I, I like the movie. What, what's your take on JFK? The movie? Yeah. You, you weren't, I, I thought, I well, it's it, you interesting. You know, you know, the press is after him because uh, 
it, they don't object to what he has to say so much as his right to say it. Right. That's really what's in question. <laughs> but, you know, you have to be objective. I, I kind of think of myself as an artist, you know, and if that doesn't sound too pretentious to you all, I'm not really a political figure. I took, I took politics into the theater. I wouldn't try to go the other way at all. I don't think Oliver Stone is overwhelmingly talented. I think that a lot of the picture is very corny, and just because it absolves me, I'm not going to be selfish and say, therefore, it's wonderful. Kevin Costner, you know, Garrison is like an intellectual. Uh, they've got Kevin Costner like he fell off a turnip truck. You know? <laughs> I, boy, you know, I've read, I've read a little on this subject, and, uh, you know, I'm not a Kennedy of foul or Kennedy assassination of foul, but oh, uh, I, I, think that, I think that Kevin Costner painted Jim Garrison in, you know, what some would say a good light. I mean, I, I didn't get a hayseed off him at all. I thought when he was waxing eloquent at the end, you know, remember your, your fallen king, I, th I thought it was kind of the touching. The real speech, the real, believe me, you know, I was there. I was on the staff of the DA for five years down there. I lived there. It's, um, it's much richer. It's much richer than anything you could synthesize. Sad to say the picture doesn't credit the, the three DAs who prosecuted the case, Shambra, Alcock, and Osser. Funny thing happened in the courtroom, you know. That was got to be ready for the jokes. The, uh, the government doctor who did the autopsy on Kennedy, used to, Dr. Fink, spelled all his words for the stenographer, you know. He'd spell a word, and he'd spell a word. About the eighth day, he said, the president was wounded in the occipital protuberance. The girl said, can you spell that for me, please? And he started to spell it, and he got hung up. He didn't know how many C's were in occipital. <laughs> and everybody began to laugh in the courtroom, and Judge Haggerty brought his gavel down, and he said, I won't have you laughing at Dr. Fink. He's been spelling for eight days. This is the first word he's missed. <laughs> And I'm surprised they don't have a separate key for occipital. So, you know, you know just, uh, that's their... Just hit it and move on, you know. Uh, what, uh, what, was, what was it like working at the Hungry Eye back when, man? Was it, it must have been exciting. That was like the ephemeral days of stand-up in this, this Well, we country. had a great boss, you know, Enrico Banducci. Banducci, guy, yeah. You know, he was really, he was an artist himself. He played the violin and he sang opera. And uh, San Francisco was a place you could do something different and people wouldn't, wouldn't condemn you for it. You Still know? can. And, uh, yeah, well, that it also became, liberated it town, became right? a political town after that, you know, with Ramparts Magazine and all. And then there was a pall over it because of the, of the AIDS thing and all. Mm -hmm. Got to be, you know, and all. The economy is in Southern California. You know, I'm working all around the country now, you know, with the news show. Yeah, you're doing, doing a show uh, for the, the show Monitor, Monitor Channel. channel more so and uh, the Monitor Channel is a new news channel, full service, 24-hour news channel. I'm doing a variety show for them, which is kind of an anomaly, but it's based on the news. And we're around the country, and uh, uh, there's a lot out there. There's what? a lot between, you know, L.A. and New York. What's the format of the Heartland? What's the format of the show, though? What, what's it about? The monologue, then the news. We use news clips and freeze them. And then we ask questions, and then we deal with it on, on film and with guests, like what happened to romance in America, or what happened to the movies, or how did we go from, uh, from uh, John Wayne to Billy Crystal? Or mm -hmm. how do we go from Paul Robeson to Arsenio Hall? Or, you know, we go like that. We ask questions and then we... Uh, oh, how did George Bush go from being George Bush king to George Bush might not get elected again? What do you think? Is yeah, it well, possible? Can I he really botch this, yeah, this well, yeah, great goodwill good he has? In, uh, well, you know what we used to say about him, Dennis, was uh, at the Republican convention, which I attended, by the way, at the uh, convention, you remember when, when um, um, uh, Charlton Heston gets up and shows the film about him being a war hero? And um, he says Bush was shot down in right, the Pacific. Right, right. And he's in the Navy. And he said he, he was floating in the water. And his, at the time of Jeopardy, his entire life flashed before him, but he wasn't in it. That kind of <laughs> sums up George Bush. I think it's, it's the Democrats that could uh, win it for him. Who's going who's gonna to be the Democratic candidate? I have no idea. Mm -hmm. You know, neither, uh, neither today. I, I hear Mondale. <laughs> Campaigns like I can't possibly get stomped any worse than last time. This uh, this has been Mort Saul. The show is Mort Saul Live on the Monitor Channel. We'll be right back after this commercial. Thank you.